We welcome you to the Bible class today. We are studying the book of Jonah, chapter 3. So if you would, please turn in your Bibles and let's begin. Last time in Jonah chapter 2, we see how that Jonah prayed to the Lord and having turned back to him, the Lord delivered him, having preserved him. Now today in Jonah chapter 3, we find two points, the fifth and the sixth in this series. First, in verses 1 through 4, we see that the Lord again commissioned Jonah to preach to the people of Nineveh in verses 1 through 4. Verse 1, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, and so the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Of course, we have already studied the first time. The first time is recorded in the beginning of the book in Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. We are not told how the word of the Lord came to Jonah, only that it did. Verse 2, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. The word of the Lord said, arise. And so again, this word suggests action. Go to Nineveh. Nineveh was the Gentile city, that great city and preach to it the message that I tell you. As a prophet of the Lord, to be a good prophet, one needed to simply speak the word of the Lord. And so preach it, the message that I tell you. Preach the preaching that I tell you to preach. That would be good instruction for preachers today. The first time the Lord told Jonah to, quote, Cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Jonah 1 and verse 2. Jonah was to go to Nineveh and cry out against it because of the wickedness of the city. The specific passage or message is not yet given. However, he was to preach a message of judgment. And so cry out against it. Preach the message that I will give you to preach. Note that Jonah was to preach to Nineveh the preaching that the Lord told him to preach. Again, this is the responsibility of the prophet and of preachers today. The same term translated preach is also translated as cry out. And so referring to the same thing. And so some versions read proclaim. And so go in and cry out against it. Go and preach to it. Proclaim the message that I have given you to proclaim or preach. In the book of Jonah, this term is translated cry in Jonah 1 and verse 2, chapter 3 and verse 8. It is also rendered as call in Jonah 1 and verse 6, and as cried in Jonah 1, 14, chapter 2 and 2, and chapter 3 and 4. Preach in Jonah 3 and 2 and proclaimed in Jonah 3 and 5. Verse 3. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. How did Jonah respond to the word of the Lord? The first time the word of the Lord came to Jonah, he disobeyed. Jonah 1 and verse 3, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And so Jonah fled from the presence of the Lord or from the word of the Lord. Now the second time the text reads, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. And so while the first time he attempted to flee from the presence of the Lord, now we see that he would Go according to the word of the Lord. The presence of the Lord refers to the work or to the word of God. The first time he fled, but the second time he went according to the word of the Lord. He served the Lord, obeying his word, as a servant and as a prophet. Jonah described Nineveh as it was when he went to the city. Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. Another version reads that it was a very large city. 
the Hebrew text is literally a great city to God. According to the text, it was said to be a three-day journey in extent. This may refer to how long it took Jonah to walk through the city in order to proclaim or preach the word of the Lord, to cry out against the city. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4. Verse 4 reads, And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and none of us shall be overthrown. And so Jonah began to enter or to go through the city of Nineveh on the first day's walk. As told by the Lord, Jonah preached the message, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. There would only be 40 more days until Nineveh would be brought down or overthrown. As a prophet, he was to preach the message. No conditions are provided here. However, Jonah understood that the message of judgment was conditional. We see this in Jonah 4 and verse 2. In Jeremiah 18, 7 to 10, in Jeremiah 18, 7 to 10, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I said I would benefit it. And so consider the word of the Lord from the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 18, 7 to 10. We see this principle here in Jonah chapter 3. And so the message of warning is conditional. He provides the 40 days as a, as a grace period, as a, as a period that they could still repent. And we know from passages like Jeremiah that if they repent, then God would relent. But if they turn from doing what was right, then God too would relent and bring judgment upon that place. Verses 5 to 10, the passage continues. In verse 5, we see, so the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Jonah preached the message of the Lord. The people of Nineveh believed God, that is, they believed the word of God, for preached by Jonah. Uh, one version reads, believed in God. And so the people of Nineveh, from the greatest to the least, not only believed the word, they believed in God. And so they repented, as seen in how they proclaimed a fast and how they put on sackcloth. Sitting in sackcloth was a cloth made from a coarse cloth. And so as an outward symbol or sign of mourning or grief. And so this was the custom. We see in passages like Esther 4 and verse 3, Lamentations 2 and verse 10, and Job 42 and verse 6. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes could also be a symbol of repentance. And so not only a symbol of grief or mourning, but also of the mourning or grief of repentance. Godly sorrow works repentance. Passages like Matthew eleven twenty one 21 and Luke 10 and 13, we see that how the passage teaches, these passages teach that, yes, these were symbols of repentance. The people of Nineveh who believed God or believed in God could have worn the sackcloth because of their grief over the prophecy of the city being overthrown. 
or sorrow over their wickedness. Jonah 1 and 2. In their case, the sitting in sackcloth inter- indicated their repentance. We know this from the teaching of Jesus in the New Testament relating to this story. A question. The people of Nineveh believed God. Why did they believe? Why did they believe God or believe in God? Consider what Jesus said about the situation. Matthew 11 and 41, the men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. In Luke 11 and verse 30, Jesus said, Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites. The sign was not the preaching of Jonah. The sign was the miracle of Jonah's deliverance. Somehow, perhaps by the testimony of Jonah, the people of Nineveh heard about what he had done and what had happened to him. Jonah had attempted to flee from the presence of the Lord, and so the Lord caused a mighty tempest to rage on the sea, cast Jonah into the sea. The Lord also prepared or had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, who prayed in repentance, and the Lord spoke to the fish, which vomited him onto dry land. And so we see the miracle of God. In passages like Jonah 1 and 17, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Again in Jonah 2 and verse 1, then the then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And in Jonah 2 and 10, so the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. It appears that Jonah also told the people of Nineveh how that he was three days in the belly of the great fish and how the Lord delivered him. And so they heard the preaching and they heard the sign of Jonah. They believed God or they believed in God and they repented. Yes, they believed the word of message of warning that Jonah preached from God. It seems in part due to the sign of Jonah how Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. Verse three, or verse six, rather. Then the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And so we see this custom even in the, in the place of Assyria, here in the city of Nineveh. The word of the Lord came to or reached the ears of the king of Nineveh. In response to the word, we see that he arose from his throne. Again, to arise is to indicate action. He laid aside his royal garment, his robe. He put on the rough sackcloth and sat humbly in ashes. Verse 7, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying that neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. And so the king of Nineveh caused it to be proclaimed. He caused the word or the message of the Lord to be proclaimed or preached. By the decree of the king and the nobles, his nobles, he declared a fast, the abstaining of food and water and drink throughout Nineveh. The decree began with these words, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat nor drink water. Verse 8, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let every one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. The decree of the king continued, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. In addition to fasting, man and beast, men and animal alike, were to wear sackcloth. 
and to cry to God. Well, the beasts themselves, blameless, but we see the custom of not only wearing the sackcloth in, in mourning and in grief and in repentance, but also symbolizing their grief, mourning, and repentance by placing the garment, the sackcloth, upon the animals themselves. And for those animals, abstaining from food, fasting. You can imagine the cry of the, of the beast going out who were hungry or thirsty. The decree called for the repentance of the people. He said, yes, let every one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Remember, the wickedness of the people of Nineveh had come up before the Lord, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 2. The king must have understood that outward symbols of repentance were insufficient. They were inadequate. This reminds us of how John the Baptist in the New Testament said in Matthew 3 and verse 8, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And so act like somebody who has repented should act. And so here in the passage, we see how that he issued, issued a proclamation. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? The king thought that perhaps God would turn and relent. First, maybe God would turn or that God would turn away from his fierce anger, his wrath. Second, maybe God would be merciful and relent from bringing disaster upon the city. That way, the city would not be overthrown. After all, the king may have thought that God was merciful to the prophet Jonah, who disobeyed him. Perhaps God would turn and relent. Being told that they had 40 days before being overthrown, maybe he thought that this was a grace period. A time that they had available to turn from their evil. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4. The term fierce may be defined as burning or burning wrath, as in Vine's Expository Dictionary. Uh, another version reads burning, and so fierce, or his burning wrath, anger, his judgment. Exodus 32 and verse 12, we see the first usage of the term. Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought us, brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and repent from this harm to your people. And so here we have the example recorded by Moses in Exodus 32 and in verse 12. Take place after the Exodus, the deliverance of the people by God. The term turn, turn is used both of God and men. The king told the people to turn from their evil way and violence. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 8. If so, maybe God would turn away from his fierce anger towards the people. And so God is not repenting of sin. God is simply, in his grace, turning from his fierce anger towards the people, as the people may relent or may turn from their sin an evil way. Verse 10. When God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from bringing the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. And so here in verse 10, last verse of the chapter, God saw their works. He saw what they did. He saw their deeds. God saw how they turned from their evil or from their wicked way. And God relented from bringing the disaster upon them. He, turned, he relented from bringing the calamity, the destruction upon them in judgment. And so God showed pity to Nineveh. He was compassionate as they turned from their evil way. 
God's judgment was conditioned upon their works. When God saw that they turned from their evil way, God, in his grace, turned from his anger and relented from bringing disaster upon them. He did not do according to the warning of the message. Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4. This was an act of grace, the grace of God. It was not deserved. Their salvation, their deliverance was not deserved or merited by the works of the people of Nineveh. However, if the people of Nineveh had not turned from their evil, then they, the city, would have been overthrown, would have been thrown down, even as the prophet Jonah had preached or cried out against the city. Here we see the grace and the mercy of the Lord. Certainly a great lesson for us today that if we will turn from our evil way, that God will relent and that God will deliver. We hope that you have been benefited by the lesson today and encourage you to continue studying these books of the Bible, in particular here, the book of Jonah. As we say, there's always more to learn, and, but with the time that we've had today, this brief time, we hope that the lesson has been helpful. Next time, Lord willing, we'll conclude the book with chapter four of the book of Jonah. Until next time, we encourage you in your, in your studies of God's word.